record there. So welcome as people are popping in. I think that there's might be an issue with the Zoom chat link. The new link may have had those options disabled. Okay, I'm gonna quickly see if I can play around here real fast, chat and bike, QA, live stream. Not seeing any options. All right, well, people may be popping in then on. I might be asking in the Facebook group. Let me just grab that real fast and then see if we have any peeps commenting. Same link as the Q&A, yeah, okay. Yes, Jennifer. Okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and begin. Welcome, Instagram. Welcome, welcome all my friends there in Facebook Live. If you have any questions, you can post you know, your comments there. And for those who are on live in the Zoom room, that can't uh, can't see your faces, that would be a technical issue that I'm having, but um, welcome anyway. We wanna get started with this. And I wanted to first, okay, so what we're gonna be going over is, I wanna go over 10 habits that have been vitally like, important for me, but also others in creating their success. Whether you're a mom, whether you're a business owner, a health coach, that uh, these things are just, daily habits that become easy over time and that help create success. So I want to go over that and then any questions that anybody has, you'll have to put them in the chat boxes here as I see people joining. Uh, and then we're going to do the giveaway. So we were doing a 30 day cleanse and had a lot of giveaways. So I'm going to announce the winners of those. And just know for those who may not be hanging out to the end that um, coming up, so we just did the 30, day cleanse. We'll be doing that again at the end of July. So the last week in July is when we will um, be launching that. So in the middle of July, we'll be announcing that. But in April, the first week in April, we'll be doing, um, or actually the second week in April, we're going to be doing a green cleaning school. So if you're wanting to uh, make over your cleaning cabinet with things that are healthier and just as effective, if not more effective, we'll be doing that. And so it's just seven days of being able to see what we do in different rooms to clean, what kind of DIYs you can do. If you're not into DIYs, how can you just buy this, you know, self-made type thing and why it's much better for our health to be doing things green instead of with a lot of chemicals. So that's coming up in April. And then the week of April 23rd is we'll be doing a seven day detox reboot. So hopefully you can join us for that. It's super fun. All right. So the 10 habits that I wanted to share with you, and, and it's really just thinking about in life that if we do things easy in life, life will become hard. And if we do things that are hard in the beginning of our life, life becomes easy. It's creating those habits, those neurons that get connected within our head and our brain that make it easier for us to do those habits um, because there's just those connections. It comes naturally to us, just like writing with your right hand. Supernatural for me. I'm a right handed person. If you're left handed trying to write with your le uh, left hand, you have different connections. It may seem difficult, but we want to get to a point where things that our life is created by a lot of habits. About 40% of what we do is habitual. And so we want to pay attention to the patterns and behaviors that we are doing, the self-talks that's going on, the feelings and emotions that we have, that those create our life. And there's a saying that how we do anything is how we do everything. I don't know if that's absolutely true, but a lot of what we do is how we do a, a lot of things in our life. Uh, just like there's a lot of things that we know are harmful to us, yet we continue to, to do those. Why do we do that? Why is it so hard to make those changes? I think about deodorant, sorry, on a tangent before I give you the, the 10, uh, that we know from research that aluminum in our bodies is not good for us when we're consuming it through our deodorant. Like it's been shown in studies that it's not healthy, that the things that we put on our skin are absorbed and go into our bloodstream and what is in our blood is what makes up who we are. And it's been shown that aluminum can lead to dementia. Yet how many of us use a deodorant that contains aluminum? So one little switch that you might be wanting to make is switching over to a natural deodorant that actually works. And that's just a, an example of something that may seem hard 
even though when you put it down, like it's not really hard to switch deodorants. Anyway, but our life is made up of, of a lot of those little things that we can start paying attention to. And so I'm gonna start with this list. And it's 10 morning habits. And why it's 10 morning habits is because if we face resistance in the morning and we tackle that first thing in the morning, that we will tend to have a, an attitude or feeling and the ability to face resistance as it comes along throughout the day. So the first habit is making your bed. I like a clean room and I like a make bed, made bed, but that wasn't something that I all would always do. And my husband, he's like the bed maker. So I would, he would get up and then I would get up. So I was the last one out of bed, but I still wouldn't make the bed. And um, when I got back, he'd get back first from working out. Then I would get back from working out. He'd have the bed made. And I made this conscious decision that, you know, there's some kind of resistance to me making the bed. Uh, and so I had decided if I'm the last one out of the bed, I make the bed. And it literally takes about 30 minutes. Pull up the sheet, put the pillows up, pull up the blanket, fluff it a little, put the extra pillows on in literally about 30 seconds. But it had resistance to that. So first thing is not that you want to have, like it's that important to have your bed made in and of itself. It's that you're creating a habit that faces the resistance. That little thing of making your bed is facing that resistance in the morning and then you're telling your brain, you're telling yourself that I'm, I'm going to tackle this and it's not that big of a deal and you experience it as you do it. Right? So that's just would be the first thing is to make your bed when you get out of it. The second is to drink water. Um, most of our brain is made up of water and if we're dehydrated, our body just don't function as well, but our brains definitely don't function as well. Our memory, our focus don't function as well as they could if we were hydrated and refueling the, the water that, that we lose as we're sleeping. So that seven, eight hours of sleep that we're getting, it is coming out through breathing, through our respiration, is coming out through sweating, that we wake up dehydrated. And so making sure that we replenish our bodies with water is just a very simple thing to creating a successful day. The third is working out in the morning. And these aren't in any particular order because you might do them in a different order depending on your you. But working out in the morning, even if it's just a small workout, not your complete workout, is that there was a study done at Appalachian University where they showed that people who did worked out in the morning, um, that they lost more weight and they slept better than people that did the same workout, but they did it at different times of the day. So even if it's just a, a shorter workout, a 10 minute, minute cardio workout, and this is where you're getting your blood flowing and the type of workout would depend on you because we're all bio individuals that as far as what is best for your, your body would be different than for me. So what it is that you do would be um, individual, but the fact that doing some kind of movement where it gets your heart rate moving in the morning and creating that habit is very powerful for creating a successful day. The third would be to brush your teeth with the opposite hand. So if you're right-handed with your left, left-handed with your right. And the reason why is that it really challenges you. It wakes your brain up. It makes you use different connections within your brain that maybe aren't as used that often. And there was, if you haven't read the book Mindset, I would recommend that you read it. And in there, Carol Dweck, I think that's her name. I could be wrong. She talks about like all these studies um, that we used to think that our brains were set, like as far as genius, smart, you know, that kind of thing that it was set and that whatever connections we had, we had, that's just what it was. We were given that, that's what we got. And we've really learned that our brains are continuing to learn and grow if we challenge them. So by brushing with your left hand is an opportunity to do something small that challenges your brain. And sometimes we just get, you know, kind of stuck in the mentality of this is how I am. We put labels on ourselves. Other people may have put labels on us that this is an opportunity from doing something really small to start breaking down those labels, to start building new connections within our brain. I mean, really through challenge comes change and through struggle comes strength. And so doing these little things can help to build the, the strength within our brains and the resilience that we have. So number four would be, don't touch your phone for the first hour of the day. And the reason why is that when, that's the first thing that we go to 
we, it puts us in reactive mode. We become very reactive to whatever is on that phone. It could be notifications, it could be texts, it could be emails, it could be like a notification from some app. We become reactive and distracted and less focused, especially if we're doing that the first hour of the day. And all studies show that you're happiest when you have inner control, when you identify more with being a thermostat. Um, so let me explain that. I think there's a thermostat and there's a thermometer. A thermometer is reactive. So if I put it in under my tongue, it reacts to the temperature that I am. And so it moves, you know, if I'm certain temperature, it will move, right? A thermostat is in control. So it sets the, the temperature for a room. So if it gets too hot, the thermostat says it's too hot and the air, con air conditioner will come on. If it's too cold, the furnace will come on. But the thermostat doesn't change. If it's too cold, it doesn't go to cold. If it's too hot, it doesn't move to too hot. It's not like the thermometer in that way. And so when we, in that first hour of the day that we get on our phone, we become like the thermometer. We're reactive. We're making changes according to other people's agendas and other things that are going on because of that phone or that device versus being in control. And so this is, can be anything in life. Um, something, I think of that thermostat, you know, if it gets too hot and we're, we're trying to be, we're being a thermometer, we'll probably start taking off some clothes or we'll drink some water because we're getting dehydrated, but we'll do something. We'll change according to that heat. We'll change according to the environment when we could be more like that thermostat instead of changing according to the environment that we are setting our boundaries. We're deciding what it is that we want and having other things change according to what we've planned and what we want to create. So be a thermostat. Number five is try to remember your dreams. So when we go to bed at night, our brains don't shut off. Uh, somebody's calling me. Our brains don't shut off. That they're working through problems, concerns. If you've asked it questions, it will start working through that. And it's one of our most creative periods of our time. And we sleep a lot of time throughout our lives. I think it's like 20 years of life. So I could be wrong. Like 20 years of our lives is in sleep. And so if we can start remembering our dreams, oftentimes that's when we will have those um, answers to our questions, to our problems. We'll be very creative and come up with solutions. If you're building a business, you might come up with great ideas as far as your business. If you're a mom and you're struggling with this or that, you might get these great ideas in your dreams, but it becomes a habit of trying to remember them. And if you don't know more about this, you can Google it. And there are some great things that will help you to start remembering your dreams. But in the morning, giving yourself that short period of time to try to recall what it was that you dreamed about. Number six would be brain food, brain water, brain feeding your brain, um, that you're eating and drinking uh, foods that build that gray matter within your brain. And you can Google them. There's, you know, a ton of research, you know, like guacamole and stuff or green smoothies is what I have oftentimes in the morning or different types of vegetables and fruits that will feed my brain, but getting good nutrition into your body feeds your brain and will set you off right. Don't skip breakfast. Um, number seven would be to have a not to do list. And I'll be real quick on this. It's just that idea of deciding the things that you won't do. Oftentimes we have this list of to do's and um, we can do anything, but we can't do everything. So it's a good idea to have a, a line that you draw. Like I don't do these things and it's, they're good, but they're probably not the most important. They're not great. And so being okay with, I'm not doing those things. Somebody else can do those things. I'm just taking it off my list or delegating it, paying for someone else to do it, take them off the list. Like with um, cleaning my house, I just took it off the list. Not a priority. I mean, having a clean house is a priority, but I don't have to do it. I can pay somebody else to do that. Um, it's kind of like with having too many windows on your computer open that it takes up space. It takes up memory on your computer that you're not, you're not really using, but you're taking up the space. So being able to close those windows by having it not to do list, um, ready, set, go. Uh, number eight would be breathing deeply, um, that our bodies need oxygen. And oftentimes we, when we get stressed or get going, we forget to breathe. So in the morning is a great time to have a short meditation. Um, I'm not all like Zen and all that stuff, but 
just taking the opportunity to breathe and get a lot of oxygen into your body. Um, number nine is having a top three priority list. And I, I say this is an absolute must if you want to have a, a successful, productive day. If you're in, whether you know, you're a professional, a mother, a student, whatever it is, that this is a must do. So I have three top priorities for my profession, three top priorities for um, just life that I will get done in that day. And it's just three. And I make sure that I feel like according to what I had planned today, that I would be able to get those things done and I would feel good about getting those things done, things done. And that I know that these are leading me towards bigger goals that I have. I'm um, just like Dr. Covey has talked about in his book, 10 Habits of, the Habits of successfully, Highly Successful People, um, that it's beginning with the end in mind, that the, those priorities that you do each day should be leading you to that, um, that bigger picture the end, right? And then the last one would be reading books that are related to that, that path that you're on, that bigger picture that you have. Um, in the morning is a great time. You can either physically read them, I read my scriptures, and then I have books that I'm reading that support either my professional, personal goals that I'm working on. Audible is a great thing. I also listen um, to podcasts and Audible books while I'm running on the treadmill or outside. So in an hour, I can listen to a lot and I put it on like fast mode. <laughs> so I speed it up. Uh, so that is just a great opportunity for you to, um, to grow and learn. And I just think about uh, that if we're thinking about the, keeping the end in mind and we have these bigger goals, who we want to become, how we want to feel, what life you want it to look like for you, um, it's kind of like steps and we have to master each step before we can move on to the next step. And so challenging ourselves, developing ourselves can help us to get to the next step. And these challenges or frustrations are kind of like plateaus where um, maybe we we're trying to accomplish something and we have some failure that if, if we're not learning and growing, we're going to keep doing the same thing and getting the same result. So I think of mistakes as that is just proof that we're trying. And so if you're going to implement, say, one of these habits, just knowing that if you fail at it first, that it's just proof that you're trying and that it gives you some feed up, feedback and data. Um, and I like to think about that if we're going to make mistakes, that they should be old mistakes, O-L-D. And the O stands for own it, that you take responsibility for your mistake if it if it hurts somebody that you apologize, you try to fix it. Um, if it hurts you, apologize to yourself. And so that O is for own it. L is for learn from it. That it, failure is a part of success. Um, it gives us that feedback. And, you know, we're asking like, what's the lesson that I can learn from, from this experience? And life tends to repeat itself, like, until we learn the lesson that we need to learn. And so life doesn't really get better until we get better. And then the D is for um, don't repeat it. So if, if a mistake happens twice, it was by choice. The first time it might have been just like a lack of awareness, lack of experience, something. But if it happens twice, it's a choice. And repeating um, the same behaviors over and over again and expecting to get a different result is what some people call insanity and other people call a uh, poor memory. But either way, if we are trying to learn from our mistakes so we don't repeat them, that we will start seeing a lot more progress. Um, and then finally, I, I just want to say that we're all gonna have difficult times, right? And for those who have been doing the, the 30 day cleanse, like we've had people who have had great success and then dropped and had struggles and others that had just out the gate had struggles. And just knowing that we'll have difficult times and they can either diminish you, they can define you, or they can develop you. And we decide, we always decide how difficulties will impact us. So my recommendation for these is that if you didn't take notes, that you go back and take notes because within two days, generally about 80% of what we listen to or have learned is gone. So there's like a learning curve, but there's also a forgetting curve. And that's about two days and 80% of that is just out the window. And knowledge really isn't power, it's potential power. It only becomes power when we take action. So I have a challenge for you, is that if you didn't take notes to re-listen to these 10 habits, and that you're gonna do this, one, ask how can I use this? 
Ask yourself, how can I use this? The second would be to ask, why must I use this? We want to take things from our head to our heart to our hands. So um, creating resolutions and visualizing things is, is great. That's a place to start, but it doesn't take it to our hands. And usually the piece that's missing is our heart and the emotions behind that. And how you can get connected with the emotions behind that is by asking yourself, why? Why must I do this? Why is this important? And listen to the answers that come up. And what you practice in private is rewarded in public. So when you see those people in public who seem very successful or they're in shape, and they, think, they seem to have it all together, really in control, is because they have practiced these things in private. They, they have these habits in place that they are now seeing the rewards um, that come through their actions, right? And so number three would be that when you when, um, schedule, when will you use this? Because if you don't put it on your calendar, you're not going to do it, right? And so schedule, when are you going to do this? If it's re-listening to this, if it's Implementing a habit, if you're going to start making your bed, put it on your calendar and schedule it. If you're going to be making a green smoothie, put it on your calendar and schedule it until it becomes second nature, it becomes a habit. And then the fourth is to teach it to someone else. So learn it first for you and then learn it twice to help people that you care about because there's other people that you're influencing who might want to create more success in their life, might want to overcome a challenge or they have certain goals that they're, they're striving to reach. And so we learn to earn to, to return. Um, in, in the business that I'm in, I love the learning and I love that it has created a great income for me. But the best part is being able to return that. Um, and that's just a great cycle to be in, the give and you shall receive. And so think about somebody who would benefit from these things that when we, we teach it, we learn it twice and we learn it deeper. It's that deeper learning. So if you do this, I challenge you to post it on social media, whether it's on Instagram, I have a bunch of awesome people on there um, and on Facebook and in the Zoom chat, which I'm sorry, I know you're in the chat. We're supposed to be all into a group together. Um, but I do want to leave you with this analogy before we go and uh, announce all the giveaways is that I learned about driftwood and driftwood doesn't rot and it can last like hundreds of years, but it's, it's wet. And so why does some wood rot when it gets wet and other wood becomes this driftwood that doesn't rot and it, it sustains itself. So with, um, normal wood, what happens is it takes in the water and it doesn't, it's not able to get rid of it, evap evaporate that water out. And so it begins to rot. It holds in that water. And then with driftwood, what happens is that it soaks in the water generally from one side, but it has this top layer where it's evaporating out. So it's not, it doesn't have the opportunity to rot. And it's the same thing with our lives, that if we are trying to keep everything to ourselves, whether that's our income, that's our gifts, our talents, our knowledge, if we're keeping that to ourselves, we become that person who has like the love of money um, that we can rot. But if we are someone who we take in that water, we take in that learning, we take in um, the good things that have come into our lives, our, our gifts, our talents, we have those things and then we give them back. It sustains us and it also blesses other people's lives. And so that's what I've loved also about doing the 30 day challenge is it's been an opportunity to give and also receive within that group. And so hopefully it's been a great experience and I, I'm, like I said, a lot of people have had great positive experience. Some of them have experienced some challenges. Um, but let's go ahead and get to the giveaway for those are who are on for that. Let me see if I have any people in the chat box. I have three of them going on here. Okay. So for those who are on live, some of you are going to have to listen to the replay because you weren't able to pop on and I'm really sorry about that. Um, we had quite a few giveaways. I had my assistant um, pull those and use random.org to go ahead and select the winners from the different ones. And so we had the pre, pre cleanse, which was a couple of weeks and different challenges that we had for you to get ready for the 30 day cleanse. And then we had the four, actually five giveaways during the, 
ignoring the challenge. And so I'll just go ahead and read these. So for day for the first um, challenge in the pre-cleanse, this is for Slim and Sassy Gum and Grapefruit. That went to Judy Johnson, so congratulations, Judy. The second day was the Brevi Diffuser, which is a, was a limited time diffuser, and the Lemon Myrtle. That went to Rebecca Miller, so congrats, Rebecca. Number three, um, the third one was for uh, several for six of the mood oil. So console, cheer, peace, forgive, motivate, and passion. So if you're needing some emotional support, I have six winners. So Brandy, you run Brandy Millsap won the con console. Um, Tabitha Tolbert won the cheer. Uh, Beth McCurdy won the the peace. Tara Bristol forgive. Anna Ladumas, I might be slaughtering your name. Uh, Anna won the Motivate, and then Tiffany Roberts won Passion. Woo! Congratulations. Let's see, number four was for the Tongue Scraper and the pH Strips and also the Dry Brush. So if you don't have one, Sean Gann, you won that. Uh, in Tune Blend and then a five minute, the five minute journal app. If you haven't use that. I love it because that's where I will put my priorities. This is what I want to accomplish for the day. I put that in there and then it reminds me at the end, like, how did it go? What were your wins? It's easy, super easy to use. So in tune for focus and five minute journal goes to Aubrey. And I know Aubrey, you're on. So congratulations to you for that. Um, number six was for a strengths coaching session. For those of you that don't know that I do strengths coaching, this really helps you to see what are your natural ways of thinking, behaving, how have you created success and how can you blueprint that and, and duplicate it in your life. And that goes to Erica. Oh, no, no, no. The strengths coaching goes to uh, Beth McCurdy also. Way to go, Beth. Then for the week one was for lemon, green mandarin and the water bottle. This is when we're focusing on drinking more water. This goes to Erica Tobis. Good job, Erica. Number three or week two was for the cute little travel bag that you put your oils in and Mito 2 Max. That goes to Haley Norton. Congratulate, congratulations, Haley. For week three, it's your choice of mood oils. Um, there was the different ones that you could choose from, and that was Jennifer Reddick. Week four was for the cleaning, um, the On Guard Cleaning Concentrate. If you haven't tried it, it's phenomenal, and you can make, I think it's up to seven bottles of cleaner with that. Maybe it's 14 bottles. I can't remember. Depending on how um, strong you make your cleaner. Also with lemon oil and purify. And that goes to Michelle Corti Cortez. I'm on live, Jared. Can you go out? Uh, Michelle. And I think I might have slaughtered your last name. And then the final giveaway was for balance and the toothpaste and deodorant, the balance deodorant and the on guard toothpaste. And that one goes to Stephanie Flores. So congratulations, everyone. I will post this in our Facebook group for the cleanse for those to kind of review. Uh, there will be a form that you can fill out to um, fill out your name and address and all that so I can get it sent to you. Uh, but welcome, um, thank you everybody for joining. And if you're joining later on, I see a lot of people on Instagram who are popping in. We went over the 10 habits of successful people and they're not the usual one you might think of. So if you want to go and listen to the replay, you can go ahead and do that or pop into the Facebook page or in our Facebook group and the cleanse group also will be the recording and it will be posted on YouTube. So a lot of access to it, but I hope you all have a wonderful day. It's been fun to be on live with everyone and here's to your success.